looking through my binoculars, I see this guy. And he's looking at me with binoculars. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. So I'm watching him, and he's watching me. Well, he, from his back, strapped to his back, was a sniper rifle. And he takes it up front, off his back, and he points it towards me. That would be scary. Oh, and at, yeah, and at that point in time, I said, wow, they are serious over here. So anyway, uh, at that point in time, I just hightailed it out of there. And then there was a Jeep that was following us parallel, and you could see the dust coming from the Jeep as it was moving along to our side, and it was about 300 yards away. And I said, well, they really don't want us here. And um, George, yeah, George Knapp uh, actually tweeted that HPI, Halo Paranormal Investigations, was headed for Area 51, so that was kind of cool. So they already knew that we were headed up there to investigate. That's now, Paul, i got, I got to ask a quick question. Um, after that event, when you were there with the guy with the rifle, did you notice any activity like following you later on, like uh, you're following you home or anybody watching your house or anything like that? Well, we did an investigation in the night sky, and um, three of my investigators claimed they saw some starlight-type UFOs that were moving erratically. And one of the girls who's an investigator with me that was at Area 51 claims that she was visited by a very strange man she thought was a man in black or a men in black. And he was in a suit, and she was painting. Um, she was doing some kind of drawing. And uh, he goes, is that your hobby? And she goes, yeah. And then he goes, do you, do you have another hobby? She goes, like what? And she goes, he goes, I don't know. He goes, do you have another hobby? And she goes, yeah, I do paranormal investigating. He goes, investigate what? UFOs? <laughs> and she just thought that was she thought that was kind of odd, yeah. you know. And you know, for him just to blurt out UFOs, and the way he was dressed, she first thought he was um, um, Jehovah Witness or um, what is that um, Latter Day Saints, uh -huh. you know, one of those guys. But then you know, looking at him, it was a hot day. He's wearing a full on suit black and white tie, and then um, he didn't give her anything, and he just walked away. That's so interesting. she even wrote a little article about it, but, yeah, she claims that she was actually, she feels that person wasn't men in black. Well, you know, things like that, you know, you mentioned, like, your little encounter there with the, the guy with the binoculars staring at you and the sniper rifle, and you saw that. That was a good little, when he pointed at you, that was like, get the hell out of here. And yeah, I, I made this mistake, you know, at one point, you know, me and Art uh, Bell were friends. And every summer, I'd take my motorcycle up from the uh, Tacoma, Washington area and ride to Reno, then in Reno to Las Vegas, and, and on my way, I would, you know, see my, my friend. And one day, he wasn't home, and they didn't expect him to the next day. So, uh, no, actually, I'm getting that, that one mixed up. No, this is the one when we went there with my truck. Uh, anyway, uh, we decided, well, we got a day to kill. And somebody told us, well, hey, you can kind of see into Area 51. You go this road. You know, <laughs> and it's a, a gravel road, and but don't go past the mailbox. And I remember at the time, this is years ago, it was a black mailbox. Well, I went past the uh, black mailbox, maybe a quarter of a mile or half a mile. I'm not really sure. And all of a sudden, I saw on this and the road was like on the side of a uh, like a hill, you know, type of thing. And, and mm -hmm. all all of a sudden, I see this vehicle coming really fast the opposite direction so i shoved it in reverse and got out of there i'm lucky i didn't get arrested i didn't get shot 
But that that tells you, you go on to where you don't supposed to be. They they take it very seriously. You know, about two months ago, the guy who went into Area 51 came out in a body bag. Yeah, I heard something about that. Yeah, we were on air at that time, and I, I subscribed to a news service, and all of a sudden, my one of my monitors of seven of them were flashing with my, a news story. The guy went into Area 51. He had some type of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, round thing with a tarp over it or plastic uh, sheathing over it on his shoulder, and he got out trying to show somebody, and they shot him dead. Wow. Wow, no, no joke. Cylinder. He had a cylinder on on his shoulder, mm-hmm. like he wanted to. You know, maybe he thought, "Hey, maybe this thing, you know, belongs to Area Fifty One." That's when t- I, I, I'm really scared because you know what? There, you don't know what your listenership is. There might be people having mental difficulties or whatever, or they get swayed easy. And you know, Facebook pushing this thing before Facebook shut it off. <clears throat> You know, to go on to Area 51, it was really scary because I mentioned here the other night, there was another talk show host uh, that um, took over Art's uh, show. And she was telling people back here a year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, she wanted to get a group of her listeners to go on to Area 51 and march into it as far as you, they could. And she would even say, I'll take a bullet, you know, to prove that there's aliens and on area 51 yet and, and and she had a group of people that you know wanted to do it and it scared me and then when this thing hit you know uh two months ago about area 51 it scared me wow wow and right now timothy beckley who's an incredible ufologist and i know you know him um he has a book out called area 51 warning stay out that book is amazing. It's like a Bible. It's just full of Area 51 information and everything else. And uh, it's an incredible book that he put out right now. So if anyone really wants to know something about Area 51, that's the book to have on your bookshelf. I'm waiting for my copy. You can find it on Amazon, people. And that is probably one of the better uh, books from you know talking to people that have actually seen it. Uh, about Area 51. So you want to grab a copy. Go to Amazon, uh, get Area 51. I think it's Stay Out or something like on, like that. Don't pass it by. You need to get that book. Absolutely. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you want to know something about Area 51, that's the book to get. Yeah. Now, didn't you write uh, something in the book, too, that got... Uh, oh, picked? yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a couple pictures of me at uh, the extraterrestrial highway and uh, at the alien and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was that was a very mem- memorable uh, investigation. I've done investigations at Stonehenge. I've done investigations at Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, well, the valley of Skinwalker Ranch, not the actual ranch. Um, um, Monterey Bay, because a lot of times they say Monterey Bay, that people over there, I was getting phone calls from Seaside, Monterey, where people were seeing USOs, unidentified submerged objects, come out of the water and take off in the sky. So we spent the whole night there. Unfortunately, we didn't see anything. So, um, and I lived in Monterey before, and um, I've had a couple of my, well, here's the incredible thing. Okay, my wife, she was abducted as a small child by a UFO. Oh, interesting. She called now, it okay. a mysterious eye. Okay, now, we're getting ready to go to break in one minute. I, oh, know, okay, I okay. want you to tell me the story uh, when we come back from break with radio stations. What? It, how old she was when she was abducted? Has she been abduct, abducted more than one time? And what has it changed in her life? The, you know, being abducted. We'll be back in two minutes. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio week with our guests, uh, Paul Roberts and uh, James Chrisbaum. So we'll be back in two minutes. Get a nice cup of Java, get, you know, a nice comfy chair, settle in. We'll be right back on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark with Gary. That's me. You are all 
If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and thank you. The views, opinions, and representations expressed on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network and its website are those of the hosts, guests, and participants, and are not necessarily those of or endorsed by the network, its affiliated stations and broadcasts, the management, other hosts, or advertisers of the network. The show is found on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network can, but do not necessarily, promote any particular lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practice. These shows are for entertainment purposes only, and are not intended to treat, diagnose, and or claim any cure of disease or condition, or give any medical or legal advice. Listening to my friend Gary Anderson on My Dreams Talk Radio, the best in paranormal radio. Well, John, I keep telling you, maybe not the best, but we are definitely on the radio. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. You can find us at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com or depending on where you live on a local radio station. Tonight, we got Paul Roberts and James Krishbaum is in the background uh, just hanging in with us. Hey, Paul, are you still there? I'm still here. Okay, my friend. So what happened to your wife? How old was she when she was abducted? Um, I believe she was like uh, eight years old. Uh, I may have the age wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's around about eight. Um, and she calls the abduction the mysterious eye. In fact, you can actually, people out there listening... You can Google her name, Deanna Jackson Stinson 
mysterious eye. And you'll see her article about it. But anyway, 